Hello everyone, welcome to another section of Schneider Electric PSC training tutorials where you will learn Schneider Electric PSC programming. So let's see what we have in this lesson. In this lesson, we are going to continue with timer operations. That is the on delay timer. So we will understand the on delay timer instruction as well as how to use the on delay timer instruction. So to begin, we are going to understand the block and its parameters. So the on delay timer abbreviated T on has this symbol. And just like any other timer, it has the enable parameter, the error notification parameter, as well as the input parameter, the preset time parameter, the cure output parameter, and the elapsed time or the internal timer parameter. So unlike the false timer, the on delay timer instruction functions a bit different. Okay, so instead it delays the on time. That's why it's called on delay timer. It delays the on time. So let's see how it operates. So it says that if the input IN becomes one, the internal timer starts. So if we have logic one on this input parameter, then the internal timer starts. And when the internal timer value reaches a preset value, the cure output becomes 1. So if these two values become equivalent, the preset timer value equals the internal timer value, then we have a logic 1 at the output. And if the input parameter becomes 0, the output becomes 0, and the internal timer stops. So whenever this pin goes low okay when this parameter goes low at any given time that is it becomes zero at any given time then here becomes zero and the internal timer resets to zero second if the input parameter becomes zero while the timer is running that is before the internal timer reaches a preset timer value the timer stops and resets without the output going to one okay so it's simple this statement means that while we are waiting okay while we are waiting for the internal time to time up to the preset timer if the input goes low before it even gets to the preset value then the output will never become high okay so what does this mean it means that if we have a scale okay so if we say that it's a preset time pt So the preset time. So after this preset time, the timer will go. Okay, the timer output Q will go high. Okay, so if we say that this is timer output Q. So after this preset time, it's going to go high. And this statement just means that before it's time up to this preset time, if the input parameter becomes zero before it reaches this preset time, then this output will never go high. So the output will just be zero or true. Okay. Hope that makes sense. Okay. So now let's use an exercise to understand how the on delay timer works. Okay. And it says that the exercise says that design a PHE ladder logic program that will sequentially and continuously flash three LEDs for two seconds each. With a start push button the stop push button is used to stop the operation okay so you can take some time pause this video and see how you can understand this timer and use it to implement this application okay so welcome back to the exercise so this is our hardware circuit and in this hardware circuit we have our start and stop push button which has been wired as such Okay, input 0 and input 1 and we have our three LEDs which have been wired to the first three outputs okay notice that we have used normally open switches for or push buttons for the start and stop operation now let's look at the ladder logic so this is our ladder logic for this circuit so you can clearly see that okay first we are going to start with the stop all right so you can clearly see that the stop has been wired in series with the entire circuit Okay, so the moment this switch is closed, the moment this switch is closed, then what happens is that a bit arrives at the memory and it's going to break this contact because it's normally closed. And as such, 
the entire circuit becomes off all right now notice also the start okay the start push button all right so when we press the start push button so this operation has been designed so much such that the start push button is pressed and held for two at least two seconds okay for this for the first led to come on okay so we are going to press it and hold it for two seconds and as such when we press and hold for two seconds then the timer will this logic becomes true then the timer will start and the timer will time for two seconds after two seconds this output will now become one and led one will come on and because LED1 will come on, its contact will close. So this contact will close, this feedback contact is going to close. And when it becomes close, notice that timer 2 is not yet on, it's not yet running. So the logic will flow like this. Okay, so this so LED1. And as such, LED1 will be held on even after we have released our hand from this that switch okay and at that instant led one now is used to start the timing of timer block two and timer block two will start timing remember that this is still on and timer block two will start timing so it will time and after two seconds it's going to i'll put a logic one here and led two comes on and when led two comes on then this will be launched also. Remember, timer three has not yet started because timer three will only will only output a logic one at its output when it has time up to three seconds. So it's up to two seconds. Sorry. So it has no time up to two seconds. So a logic will pass. When the logic will pass, then timer two will be on. And timer two will be on for the duration that timer three will be off. So Timer 2 now starts timer 3. Okay. And as timer 2 is running, timer 3 starts the timing. And after 2 seconds, timer 3 goes high. Timer 2 will go off because when it goes high, it will now disconnect it because this its coil contact will now open. This one will open since a normally closed contact. And as such, timer 3 now will launch it normally open contact and when largest is normally open contact remember timer one is not running so it's not running then the logic will flow here and timer three will be held on and as timer three is held on then this contact of timer three is also held on and as such it will start timer one and timer one will start timing now for two seconds and after two seconds timer one will come on and then it will break this is contact it will sets it off and when you set it off the led3 goes off okay i know this may sound complicated but okay just take some time and reading it out and you will realize that it will implement this exercise okay so let's move now to the software to see the operation so i've already created the application i'm just going to go ahead now and test it out so I will build the exercise. Just have to reveal it. Then I will connect it to another. Remember that the variables also have created the variables. And these are the address. I'm using memory bit addresses. Okay, so like I said, you can replace this address with whatever address an input address or output address. You can you can replace this internal memory address with physical input or output addresses okay so we'll go back to our application so it's now connected i will transfer it to plc run after transfer okay all right so my plc is now in the run mode okay i'll just arrange my screen so let's see if it's visible All right, so to begin, we are going to start this operation. So I will force it to one, which is the first value, and set it to one. And then I will allow it to be one for at least 
two seconds okay so i can now set it off I can set it back now to zero okay so i've set it to zero you can clearly see that okay so this will be on two seconds two seconds on off okay so they are flashing for two two seconds each i'm kind of flashing the led for two seconds i did the two two seconds i did the three two seconds I did one two seconds on I did two two seconds on and so forth okay so i can now decide to stop the system by forcing this bit to logic one and everything goes up everything resets to nothing Okay, and I have to set it back again to, to zero and then set the start again to one for the process to continue. Okay, so I hope that you can now understand it. Okay, so our process is working as expected. Okay, so let's go back to the presentation so congratulations let's see what we understood here so here you see that if the input i1 becomes one the internal timer starts that's for an on delay timer and when the internal timer starts timing and then it value reaches a preset value the output becomes one and if the input becomes zero the output becomes zero and the internal timer stops or resets and if the input becomes zero while the timer is running that is before the timer reaches the value of the preset then the timer stops and resets without the output going to one all right okay that concludes this lesson and in the next lesson we are going to continue with timer operation but this time around the off delay the timer instruction we are also going to see an application example how we apply off timer instructions in a plc application so please if you like this video give it a thumbs up share it and subscribe and make sure you hit the notification bell so that you never miss any of our new releases so thank you very much and please if you think this video needs improvement please do share it with me in the comment section down below and so see you in the next video